Hello, this is Kerwin, and welcome to an episode of Travel Talk. And today's topic is going to be about requesting special services, how to do it. Uh, behind me is, uh, I think it's the Air China B777-300ER, screaming into landing in Los Angeles Airport. Uh, if you ever want to go, stop by Sepulveda Boulevard, and uh, you can watch the planes land uh, from out there. Uh, special requests. You probably don't think about it because you probably never used it, but... Uh, if something happens, then it's probably something in you. So when I say something happens, like uh, let's say you break a leg, sprain an ankle, um, and maybe sprain an arm, have back issues, are a little older, can't walk all the way down to the jetway, and you know anything that affects your mobility or anything like that, you probably want to request some special services. And how you do this is when you're booking your ticket, you're going to get an option for special assistance. When you click on the special assistance, you normally get options like, I'm looking at one for American Airlines, they'll have mobility. You say special assistant near the airport, traveling with a service animal, electrical medical equipment. Um, so there's a whole host of things uh, that you can have. Um, you can actually request oxygen. Uh, when you're on a on a on an airplane, and uh, and it's also because if you bring a medical oxygen, it has to be there's certain parameters that has to be met, and airlines normally have all that set up for you, um, so you can actually request that if you need it. Now this is something you have to request beforehand, and again, just like special meals, if you change your flight, make sure that your special request um, go with you. So for example, you could request a wheelchair and there are different types of wheelchair. So if you want wheelchair assistance, you could say, uh, I can, I'm fully immobile, uh, which means that you have to get wheelchair services all the way. And what happens is that when you get on there, when you get to the door of the airplane, they take you out of your wheelchair or the wheelchair that you're in put you in what's called an aisle chair. An aisle chair is called an aisle chair because guess what? It fits in the aisle of the airplane. Then what happens is they take you down the aisle and take you out of the aisle into your airplane. Now you'll see some uh, some some influencers saying, oh, you're not finding a new hack. You can lift up the arm of the wheelchair. Oh my God, I didn't think you could do that. Well, there's a reason for it, right? Uh, there's a little button that's under the the armrest, that's usually the back of the armrest uh, and at the aisle. And that little button is there so you can actually lift the armrest all the way up. And so the person who's in the wheelchair can slide right into the seat. So you'd have to lift them over. Now, this is why when you travel, you have to make sure that you tell the airlines what your needs are. Because if you say you need a wheelchair and you're sitting in, a, in an aisle, that uh, in, in, a, in a row where the armrest doesn't go up and there are some airplanes like that, then you can't really do the wheelchair thing because um, you need to be sitting in a row where the armrest goes up. Li likewise, when you're traveling an infant, I've been on many flights where people have switched, have, have been switched uh, their seats because they're traveling with an infant. They didn't say they're traveling an infant, and then they get to the airport and they pick the seats and that row does not have an additional um, thing for the infant. And you can't have like two infants in the same row because you don't have enough oxygen mask. So little things like that, people think the airlines are stupid sometimes, but they're not, they know what's going on. So the flight attendant will come around and she's like, well, I have to move you to a different row. If somebody is sitting in that row, then they have to swap. We talked about swapping seats. This is probably the only, one of the few legitimate reasons for you to change your seat. The other one, I, which I didn't mention, was if you're in an exit row. If you are too young, you cannot sit in the exit. If you're under 15, you can't sit in the exit row. On some airlines, I was actually on, uh, might have been Air Mexico 
or I think it was here in Mexico, flying into Houston. And the lady came over and she spoke to me only in Spanish. I didn't understand anything she was saying. And she goes, you can't sit here. <laughs> and she goes, you need to be able to speak Spanish to sit here, which makes sense. A lot of her customers are Spanish speaking. Some are English speaking, but probably more, more of her, most of her customers are Spanish speaking because I'm on here in Mexico and I'm coming out of Mexico. So it makes sense, right? And so I had to give up my exit row seat and she found another seat for me. So that was good. But um, you really have to let airline know what you need. And now some people need a personal assistant. The airlines do not provide a personal assistant for you. Uh, they will provide a wheelchair. So the wheelchair can come. Uh, once you get to the airport, you let them know you're at the airport and then they'll somebody will come and take in a wheelchair to get you to check in, take you through security into your gate. Normally, once you get to the gate, the wheelchair person disappears because they have other customers to attend to. They're not your personal assistant, so they can't stay with you the entire time. So what they then do is that they, when you're ready to board, the agent calls and says, hey, ready to board, and the wheelchair person comes back to get you and make you board first. If you are someone who needs to be lifted out of your chair, you can't walk, uh, then they'll board you first and give you adequate time to get settled to get settled in. It takes a little while to get all that stuff done. Some people can, they need a wheelchair because they can't walk far distances. So they need the wheelchair to get to the gate. But once they get to the gate, they can walk down to the jet to the to the airplane. Some people need can't walk down to the airplane. But once you get to the airplane, they can walk in and sit down. And uh, so the, the the special service requests ask you these questions so they know what you need. The crew, and they used to have a piece of paper with all that. Now it's all electronic. So they have a list of all the people who have special services on the plane, knows where they're sitting and knows what they need. The other special service that you kind of don't think about as a special service is unaccompanied minors. Some airlines do not take unaccompanied minors because they're too much responsibility and they don't want to deal with it. Um, it's some kids are really good. Some kids are not so good. And so, um, it's a lot of work to take care of the children, uh, when they're flying uh, alone. Uh, some airlines have specific teams that will do that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really very well coordinated. The child has to be signed up by whoever is picking them up in the reservation. It says who drops them off, who picks them up. And then they get an ID, make sure it's the right person. You sign off on them. Sometimes the kids um, play silly and run away. And then the airlines can't find them and it gets hairy. There's been many stories um, about that. So if you have a, a, an unaccompanied minor and ages differ by airline and by country and, uh, and by whether you find domestic or international, typically they try not to have a connecting flight. Uh, because it's really difficult if something happens in between and then the child has to be taken care of in between, it, it, it gets a little messy. Uh, one of the things when you're doing special services, and when you're doing any kind of travel at all, make sure you don't pack your medication. Keep your medication with you. If for whatever reason they're saying you need to check your bag, take all the medication you need out of that bag because that bag may be delayed and you may not get it when you arrive at your destination. That's just the reality of flying. So I'm just trying to give you some advice so you can get around all the oddities uh, that may happen when you travel. Um, I think that's about it for special services. Uh, don't automatically expect the flight attendants to like, you know, help you with your bag, take your bags down from the thing and all that, because that's not one of their official duties. I think they do it because you know there are people helping people but some flight attendants have back issues it happens um and so they can't do a lot of the stuff that um you know although they're supposed to be able to lift 65 pounds because that's about the weight of the exit row door um but you know but sometimes they're injured and uh so that's about it for um for these but just remember, you can request it and you request it when you're making the booking. If you're unable to make it when you're making the booking, you can call. 
And then when you call, sadly, there's probably going to be a hold because that's how it is these days, unfortunately. Uh, but when you call, you give them a reservation and they will take care of it for you. Always make sure they do it on all the segments. So if you have a return flight, let them do it on the return flight as well, the outbound flight. Sometimes they don't. So after they do it, go back to the airline website, pull up your reservation and check on the reservation to see if it's there. Uh, the, the larger airlines have ways for you to go to the website, pull up your reservation, your confirmation number and your last name, and you can see all the special services that you've requested, including special meals, if that's one of them. Some airlines are not that sophisticated and you won't see that. And so uh, you have to call, especially like with the low-cost carriers. Um, and if you book the reservation on an online agency, you may not have been able to request what you need. And even if you requested what you need, you should go back and check anyway. And about, I'd say, 48 hours before, call to make sure it's still there because lots of airlines says you have to do it at least 24 hours before to make sure you do that. Also recognize that some airports may not have uh, some of the systems that you need. The smaller airports may not have anything. Or if they do, you have to get there earlier because you know they may only have one or two people working in wheelchairs and then they have a few more flights. The smaller the airport gets, the more trickier they get. So just bear, just bear that in mind that you may not, may not have all the services like you would at the larger airports. So that's it for this one. Uh, how to do special services. This is Kerwin with Passwater.com, CruiseNet2.com, and uh, for another travel talk. Have a great trip.